What's good, Josh? Boy Ross back again with another video. So we're going to check out 10 most recycled WWE finishers. Hey, when it comes to wrestling, a lot of things you see, <laughs> it's already been used many, 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 many times. Moves, storylines, you know, uh, feuds have kind of been repeated from other feuds like wrestling is a revolving door of things that may have happened in the past and uh the moves are no uh, exception in fact a lot of the moves that used to be finishing moves back in the day they're now setup moves they're moves for false kickouts you know like the super kick how many times everybody uses the super kick it used to be effective now it, it's it's literally just a power up move. It's just a move that you know you use for you know dramatic effect. So we're gonna check out some of these recycled WWE finishers. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel, man. We're getting right into this one. But there have been some iconic and beloved finishers in <coughs> WWE, from the tombstone pile driver to the curb stomp. These finishers were perfect for the wrestler who used the move, and eventually, over time, became synonymous with their character. Coming up with new and unique finishing Love moves it. is mm, kind of hard. This has resulted in the majority of finishing moves being recycled and passed on to the next generation of WWE superstars. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 most recycled WWE finishing moves. <clears throat> Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10, The Famouser. Mm. The Famouser has predominantly been used by Love three the famous specific actually. WWE wrestlers as a finishing move. The first wrestler was Marty Jannetty, but his version of the move often looked awkward upon execution. The wrestler then who popularized the move during the Attitude Era was Billy Gunn. Mm -hmm. Gunn performed the move tremendously as yeah. he was able to get extensive height on his leap, which always looked great on yeah. WWE television. Good looking Finally, move. Dolph Ziggler has adopted the finisher as his move and now uses it as a secondary finishing move, often preferring the super kick or the zigzag finisher. Mm -hmm. Number 9. Pay Dirt when Shelton Benjamin decided to abandon his popular T-Bone suplex finisher, that fans suplex were disappointed. Was nice too. Benjamin could hit the T-Bone out of nowhere. It was a perfect fit for his character. Benjamin, upon the retirement of the T-Bone as his finisher, began to use a move known as Pay Dirt. This move sees Benjamin perform a <clears throat> jumping reverse STO. The move mm, pales in comparison yeah. to the T-Bone suplex, and the move relies on the person taking the move to sell it with conviction. Yep. R-Truth would later adopt the move, renaming it as the What's Up, and then later rebranding the move as the Little Jimmy. Number eight, <laughs> the Mandible Jimmy. Claw. The Mandible Claw is one of the more unique finishers ever yeah. presented in WWE. It was popularized by hardcore legend Mick Foley mm -hmm. and involves a wrestler placing his middle and ring finger in the opponent's mouth and then sliding them under the tongue, pressing down on the tissue at the bottom of the mouth. The palm of the same hand is then placed under the jaw, and according to Foley, this should lead to the person taking the move to black out. The move was perfect for Foley, and unique finishing moves are always appreciated. Mm -hmm. This is why it was welcome when The Fiend began to use the move. The Fiend would use the move in the majority of his matches, and he would even use the move on Foley himself in yep. an incredibly memorable segment on Raw. Foley has had nothing but positive things to say in relation to The Fiend <clears throat> using his finishing move, and this is what the WWE Hall of Famer had to say during an interview with Sporting it, News. It's his character. I'm really happy to see him use the move and to be shifting gears of that character to make it intriguing and exciting television. Number seven, the camel. I always thought that move just, I, don't put your goddamn fingers in my mouth. Especially the goddamn dirty ass sock you got from <laughs> from your pants. Get the, no, just... Just knock me out. Choke me out. Do not put a goddamn dirty ass sock in my mu Nah, bro. I'm good. Clutch. <coughs> Corey Guerrero is a wrestler who is widely regarded as the innovator of the camel clutch finishing move. But in WWE, it was the Iron Sheik who popularized the move. Since the Sheik used the move, numerous wrestlers have recycled the move as their finisher, with only mm -hmm. a few of them having major success. Wrestlers such as Muhammad Hassan and Rusev have all mm -hmm. used the move, but neither of them has ultimately reached the heights that the Sheik did with the submission hold. In fact, when a wrestler uses the move in modern day WWE, it's appreciated if they offer a new take on the traditional move. This was seen with Veer as his version of the camel clutch what is known as Veer, the cervical man? clutch and looks incredibly devastating what as Veer traps Veer? one single arm behind his back before locking in the sinister clutch. Oh, that's a Number six, of the master lock. <laughs> Upon introducing the master lock in WWE, <clears throat> Chris Masters instantly became a huge deal. Mm -hmm. The full Nelson finishing move was immensely popular <laughs> with fans, so much Sean so that WWE even launched the master lock challenge segment. 
In a weird turn of events, the first wrestler to break the submission, that being Bobby Lashley, would end up using the move as his own finisher years later in uh -huh. WWE, this time known as the Hurt Lock. Uh -huh. Lashley has had tremendous success with the move and even won his first ever WWE <coughs> title with the submission in 2021. <laughs> Masters has spoken at great length in relation to what he thinks of Lashley using his finishing move, and this is what he had to say during an interview with Chris Van Vliet. It doesn't change the fact that the Master Lock is the OG. And I know a lot of people are going to bring up Hercules and Ken Patera, but we're talking about in the modern era, ladies and gentlemen. Sure, yeah. So, I mean, I think Hurt Lock, Master Lock would still be uh, kind of interesting. But, like, you know, it only makes sense for Bobby. I've never came out on, like, some dirt sheets and buried Bobby. And, like, here's the thing. Think about this. I mean, from my standpoint, would you rather have Bobby Lashley adopt it or some guy maybe that they push for a month who doesn't mm -hmm. even amount? Number five, Dream Street. That's real. So uh, I had to stop the video uh, because I noticed there was some glitching going on, and I'm pretty sure you guys have seen it in other videos. I'm not sure what's going on with uh, my OBS and my webcam. And, you know, I had to try to figure out something, reset it or whatnot. So I'm sorry about that, y'all. Uh, I'm going to try to keep, make sure it's good and it's not glitching. So let's get back into this video, man. <laughs> DiBiase Jr. opted to use a Cobra Clutch Slam for his finishing move. <clears throat> Dream Street paid tribute to his father, the Million Dollar Man, and could look great if the wrestler taking the move sold it effectively. Mm -hmm. Years later, Jinder Mahal would recycle the move, and his version known as the Colas has received criticism from fans. <clears throat> the problem is that Mahal was WWE's resident jobber, and then when yeah. he was propelled into the main event scene, his finishing move just wasn't appropriate for a main event level star, as Mahal rarely ever won a match with the move. Mahal's version often looks awkward as he sometimes struggles to perform it correctly, leading to some fans suggesting that Mahal introduces a brand new finishing move into his arsenal. <laughs> Number 4. The Breakdown The first period. ever WWE Undisputed Champion Chris Jericho is the king of evolution. Over his decorated career, Jericho has added several key moves to his arsenal, including adding brand new finishing moves. In 2001, Jericho introduced a new finishing move known as the Breakdown. Oh, wow. This was a full Nelson face buster, and Jericho <clears throat> would even win his first world title with the move when he defeated The Rock at 2001's cool. No Mercy event. Didn't the Breakdown that. being used as Jericho's finisher would be short-lived, as Jericho would soon leave the move behind in favor of moves such as the Lion Salt and the mm -hmm. Walls of Jericho. For the past 15 years, The Miz has used a version of the Breakdown Skull as his finishing finale. move, and his version is known as a Skull Crushing Finale. Due to Jericho only using the move for a short period yeah, of his career, most fans now associate the move with The Miz, mm -hmm. as The Miz continues to use the move on a weekly basis and will likely do so until he retires. Number 3. The Pedigree oh. Triple H's pedigree finishing move is one of the most iconic finishing moves in WWE, yep. and when Seth Rollins began to use it as an alternative finisher, it made a ton of sense. Rollins was involved in a storyline with the game at the time, <clears throat> making it a logical addition to Rollins' moveset, and he continues to use the move as a finisher to this very day. The only thing is it don't finish nobody. That's my only issue with it. I don't have a problem that he does it, because it makes sense, his connection with Triple H, but it don't finish nobody. It's just... It's just like a setup move. His actual finisher finishes people, but using someone else's old finisher that used to finish people as a setup, is, is, that's just what it is now, you know? According to Triple H during an interview with Fox Sports, he gave Rollins full permission to use the move. The game added, he came to me and he was like, how would you feel about it? But given the storyline and everything else, how would you feel about me using the pedigree? I was like, if you think that benefits you, please do. Like, I would be honored. And you know, and it worked for him for a while. So yeah, I was happy for him to do it. You know, there's moments in your career where things are like they say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. So for me, if he felt like it was meaningful to him, I was glad he could use it and get something out of it. That's cool, Triple H. Number two, the stunner. Uh, when Kevin Owens began to use it. the stunner as his finishing move, fans were curious as to what Stone Cold Steve Austin uh -huh. thought of his beloved finisher being used. Yep. According to Owens, it was Austin himself who gave permission to use his finisher, which was a <clears> big <throat> endorsement for the former Universal Champion. This was fitting as Austin would come out of retirement in 2022 match, so to face Owens in the main event of Night oh, 1 of WrestleMania that was 38. So fun. Austin is often nothing but praise towards Owens, and Austin is content with Owens carrying on the legacy of his celebrated finishing move. Of course. And number one, the cutter. Johnny yep. Ace is widely regarded as the innovator of the cutter finishing move, but over the past 20 years, the cutter has become Love one it. of the most popular finishing moves in WWE thanks to Randy Orton. Yep. It was initially Diamond Dallas Page who made the popularity of the move skyrocket mm -hmm. as he would use the move as a finisher both in WCW and WWE. 
But when Orton began to use the move in 2003, everything changed. Mm -hmm. Orton executed the move perfectly and he was able to hit it out of nowhere, yep. making it one of the most exciting finishers that exists today. It was DDP himself who gave Orton permission to use the move as he was getting set to retire and Orton was without a substantial finisher. Matt Riddle has also recycled a move and now uses an RKO as his finisher. This is mainly because he's one half of RK Bro, mm -hmm. so it'll be interesting to see if Riddle continues to use the move when the duo inevitably breaks up. But there you have it, folks. Ten of them Yo, I love the cutter. I love the RKO. The thing is, Randy Orton, even though it's, you know, just, you know, another version of the cutter, diamond cutter, it's, it's the way he does it, the way he executes it, the height he gets. Like, some, a lot of times he get parallel to the ground. One of my favorite RKOs is when this is after he got kicked out of Evolution, and it was on a Monday Night Raw. And all the like the baby faces were, you know, ganging up on Triple H and everybody lifted up Triple H for Randy Orton to hit him with the meanest RKO. Crowds going crazy. Everybody's going crazy. And he lifted him up and he hit, in my opinion, one of the greatest standing RKOs of all time. You know, you know the clip. Oh my God. Literally, he just jumped up. Dude was level with Triple H head in the air. Hit him with a beautiful RKO. Oh, one of my favorite endings to a Monday Night Raw and one of my favorite standing RKOs from Randy Orton, man. So, yeah, this was a pretty cool list. Comment down below. Let me know what's your favorite WWE finisher of all time, man. Let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 150K, and I am still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champion of the world and the Coach World Heavyweight Champion. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.